So I'm really grateful and appreciative of the next speaker who came here uh, from Jerusalem. And the next one is Professor Dina Ben Yehuda, the head of Adassa Medical Organization's Department of, Hemato of Hematology, and also the Dean of Adassa Hebrew University School of Medicine. So let me open. Dina, thank you for coming. And we're looking forward to hear your talk. Thank you, Ronit, uh, to give a talk after Dan Peer and before Moshe Oren. What an honor, what a challenge. Uh, <laughs> I'm a physician, uh, and I'll talk about targeted living nanoparticles for lymphoma therapy. Uh, it is a, a patient like this that uh, brought me uh, into the lab to research apoptosis in lymphoma. Uh, as you can see, this patient has uh, huge lymph nodes, uh, but he's still smiling because he has follicular B cell grade one non-Hodgkin lymphoma, where uh, the main uh, uh, cancer uh, drive is uh, anti-apoptosis and not uh, proliferation. And that's because of the translocation 1418, which causes BCL2 overexpression. Uh, we looked for a new anti-apoptotic uh, 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 protein in this disease, and uh, uh, we we found uh, uh, we found uh, another uh, anti-apoptotic protein uh, from the family of the inhibitor of apoptotic uh, apoptosis protein IEPs. Uh, these proteins, as you can see. Uh, having the amino terminal, uh, a very, very preservative uh, sequence from the baculoviruses, which is designated BIR for baculovirus IEP repeats. And in the carboxy, uh, and uh, most of them have uh, the ring uh, domain. And uh, we and the other described a new protein which is called Levine or melanoma IEP. Um, we showed that uh, Levine blocks apoptosis through its ability to bind and inhibit specific spaces, seven, three, and nine. And we found that uh, it has two alternative splicing, Levine alpha and Levine beta. The proteins are different in uh, 18 amino acids. Boaz Nachmias, an MD-PhD in the lab, uh, found a very interesting relationship between Levine and the caspases. As, uh, as I, I said before, uh, Levine blocks caspases, but also the caspases cut Levines in a specific uh, point um, and uh, creates a new two proteins a truncated levine alpha and truncated levine beta. A surprisingly, we found that uh, these truncated, trans, truncated proteins act in paradoxical fashion as an inducer of cell death. Very, very efficient inducers of uh, uh, apoptosis in the, in the cells. So we thought about Levine now as a regulator of apoptosis protein. When there is a transient death stimuli, Levine blocks caspases and inhibits apoptosis. But when there is a major apoptotic signal, the caspases cuts Levine to produce this cleaved Levine, which is pro-apoptotic protein confirming cell kill. We found that uh, this T. Levine activates an alternative form of cell death when apoptosis is inhibited. Like you see here, when we added ZVAD, which uh, blocks apoptosis through inhibition of caspases, we still had apoptosis, we still had cell death, not by apoptosis, as you can see morphologically here, but as necrosis. And in different system, we got different uh, uh, ways of uh, cell death. 
We started to study our protein in melanoma because uh, that's where it was expressed uh, in the cyber. And we found that in primary cells from melanoma patients, some of the patients had very high expression of, uh, of livin. Some had intermediate low, and some had almost no expression of the protein. So, we, so in summary, we had like a, a 40, around 40% 40 of the tumor samples that had livin. The overall so survival in the patients with active disease was 2.3 years uh, for those with high livin, four years for those with no livin, but uh, we were surprised to see that patients with low intermediate livin levels had the best survival of 11.3 years. And you can see it here in the survival curves. A high livin, no livin, and intermediate uh, low livin. Uh, Boaz Nachmias showed that uh, the reason for it is probably that when you have very high livin, you don't get the truncated protein. The caspases cannot cut it uh, like with the low intermediate. And once you get this uh, proapoptotic T livin, the cells die. Uh, we, we created a, a, a Hodgkin's lymphoma model where we showed that there is a difference between the two uh, types of livin, livin alpha and livin beta. Uh, livin alpha uh, induced uh, Hodgkin lymphoma in the mice uh, very quickly. Uh, between 11 and 13, in day 13, we almost had 87% uh, of the mice with a tumor, whereas uh, livin beta, almost no tumors, and also as for the size, the size of uh, the tumors created by livin alpha was much, much larger than those with livin beta, the same for a um, tumor developed, livin alpha versus livin beta. And we understood it when we looked at a Western blot and we saw that the tumors with livin beta had this truncated livin protein, the T livin, whereas uh, tumors with livin alpha had no uh, this uh, subunit. So uh, we understood that we have in hand a very efficient uh, anti-apoptotic protein, and we decided to, uh, to try and see uh, how we can uh, use it uh, further. Uh, just to, to let you, to show you that uh, when we put an, a, a, a mutation in the cutting point, uh, livin alpha and beta behave the same. Uh, we also saw that uh, livin beta inhibits tumors development only in mice with NK cells activity. As you can see here, the skid beige mice without NK versus the node skid mice with NK cells. And also when we use node skid with, the IL2, with no IL-2 receptor, we got the same picture, uh, meaning that uh, there was no effect of, uh, of the uh, truncated uh, living beta. So in order to use it as a drug and that it will enter cells, we had to reduce the size. And we, dis we succeeded to do it uh, down to 70 amino acid, which we called the mini t or uh, MTV. And uh, we, our model uh, was because of I'm a hematologist who was uh, targeting living uh, nanoparticles for diffuse large B cell lymphoma, uh, DLBCL, which is the most prevalent non Hodgkin uh, lymphoma at diagnosis and the most common aggressive lymphoma. So we put this uh, uh, T living into nanoparticle, PLGA. And we also added uh, a linker, CD4D ligand. And uh, 
hoping that this uh, complex will cause cell death, lymphoma cell death. And uh, we, could we could show that we have our MTV nanoparticles uh, with the uh, MTV, like you see in Komashi and uh, in Western blot. And we also showed very nicely that uh, MT uh, MTV living uh, in the nanoparticles caused the cell death. Uh, targeted the CD40 uh, ligand MTV nanoparticles did the same work. So we had now a, a nanoparticle with our very strong uh, pro-apoptotic protein uh, connected to a ligand that can target it uh, into lymphoma cells. Uh, in a xenograft mouse model of diffuse large B cell lymphoma, uh, when we injected it uh, to the mice uh, intravenously, we got uh, a very um, a distributed uh, disease. You can see here that uh, the spleen, the liver, the lungs, the kidney, and the bone marrow were involved. And for me, the most, imp most interesting uh, point was that the brain uh, also showed involvement. And uh, it's uh, so important because there is no real uh, animal model for CNS lymphoma, which is one of the most serious complications of this disease. Because as you well know, there is a blood-brain barrier, and all the drugs that we are giving our patients are not getting into the brain. So uh, you can understand how happy I was when I saw that the CD40 ligand MTV nanoparticles uh, cured the mice with the uh, brain involvement. Uh, there is a movie here, but uh, I decided not to show because it looks very sad to me, uh, where you can see the uh, treated mice, they're happy and they're running around, whereas the sick mice with the who didn't get treatment are very, very sick neurologically. They almost can't move. And as for survival, uh, so uh, here you see in orange, these are mice that were treating with the whole complex, the CD40 ligand MTV nanoparticles. Uh, and you see the best survival. In green are mice that were treated with the MTV nanoparticles uh, particles without the ligand, and uh, in blue, uh, non-treated treated mice. I want you to notice that uh, mice that were treated with the uh, PLGA only, or with the CD40 ligand uh, nanoparticles, also had a response. Not as good as uh, the others, but also had a response. So you know, we, lymphoma is the malignancy of the immune system, and the uh, immune system plays a major role in this uh, disease and in fighting the disease. CAR T, for example, and other immunotherapies that you know. So we decided to look if there is an immunological response to the non-MTV uh, 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 particles, and indeed we found high levels of gamma interferon in, uh, in the mice that we injected the, uh, the non-MTV contained nanoparticles. Uh, this, this, uh, this is another thing that uh, I was very interested in, uh, the fact that when we treated the mice with, the, uh, with our uh, treatment, they not only that they didn't uh, lose weight, as happens when you treat uh, with chemotherapy, they even uh, gained weight, and we were very happy about it too. Uh, CD40 MTV uh, nanoparticles induce apoptotic tumor cell death. Uh, also, when we injected it subcutaneously, it was important because then we could measure uh, the tumor uh, volume, and here we added as a control a uh, doxorubicin, which is the drug of choice in lymphoma, and you can see that uh, our uh, 
uh, treatment was uh, as good as and even more uh, as for tumor uh, uh, size. And it was uh, in correlation with the Caspase three concentration. And uh, again, these uh, mice also had uh, a very good uh, well-being with the treatment. And you can see here in green, the doxorubicin treated the mice. Uh, when they became back better, they gained weight, but uh, during the treatment, they were very, very uh, thin and they didn't eat well. So in conclusion, Levine is a regulator of cell death. Levin plays a dual role in, in, in tumor genesity. Levin promotes tumor development and confirms chemotherapy resistant to tumor cells. Upon cleavage of Levin, tumors undergo apoptosis leading to a delay in tumor development. And the CD40 ligand MTV nanoparticles induce apoptotic or necrotic tumor cell death in lymphoma. And the uh, I would like to acknowledge uh, the people in the lab because I'm only talking and treating patients, but uh, they are doing the work. And uh, I want to thank Professor uh, Shimon Benita from our pharmacy school, uh, who helped me with the nanoparticles, and the same Tahir Nasser. And uh, I want to thank all our supporters, and thank you for your uh, attention. from bench to the bedside. So I'm grateful and welcome to the nanotechnology communities. Is there any question from the audience? Maybe I'll, I'll start with one. Um, comment on the ligand, the three ligand. What is the targeting moiety of two sulfate here? Connect it? No, the sulfate is the, the, connect, the connection. That's the way to connect it uh, to it. We chose a CD40 ligand, and we had the. We started with anti-CD20, which is a known drug. Uh, you know the rituximab, or now we are using uh, the Gaziva, which is more humanized. But uh, we decided to go for the CD40 because uh, we want to to have something new, and uh, we saw that it acts exactly like the CD20 in lymphoma because there is a CD40 on the surface of these cells. So uh, there is a uh, PhD student in the lab that is working on it uh, now. Um, I don't have uh, any news to tell, but we are checking it because I think it's very, very interesting. Okay, thank, thank you, you very much.